Hi there. During the past years I've posted some videos with some of my best astrophotography results. Today, I'm going to share much more of my results, some better some worse, of both deep sky photography and planets, with my home telescope and a budget DSLR camera. While professional astrophotography equipment can be quite expensive, I was able to achieve some impressive results with a modest setup that is affordable for many amateur stargazers. Capture these images, I used a Celestron Nexstar 130 SLT telescope, which has a 130mm aperture and a 650mm focal length. The scope was modified so that the primary and secondary mirrors are closer to each other, and that makes it possible to attach my DSLR camera without the need to use Barlow lens. I already talked about this in a past video. I paired the telescope with a Canon EOS 700D, or my personal smartphone, a Samsung Galaxy S10 e with Barlow lens for planets. Now, let's take a look at some of the images I was able to capture with this setup. Starting with deep sky objects, that includes nebulae, galaxies and star clusters. The goal here was to capture as many frames or photos with the longest exposure time you can do in order to get the maximum amount of light, since these are quite dim to our eyes and cameras as you can imagine. This is the Andromeda Galaxy, the closest spiral galaxy to our own Milky Way. It's over 2 million light years away and contains hundreds of billions of stars. The bright center of the galaxy is a supermassive black hole, and you can see dark lanes of dust and gas swirling around it. The galaxy's spiral arms are home to many young blue stars and pinkish areas of ionized gas. This is the Triangulum Galaxy, a spiral galaxy located about 3 million light years away from Earth. It's the third largest member of the local group of galaxies, after the Milky Way and Andromeda. Same as Andromeda, this galaxy is home to many young blue stars. This is the Orion Nebula, one of the most recognizable deep sky objects in the night sky. The pink and blue colors are caused by ionized gases, and the bright star at the center is actually a young star cluster. This is the Pleiades, also known as the Seven Sisters, a beautiful open star cluster located about 444 light years away from Earth. It contains around 1,000 stars that form together from the same molecular cloud. It is surrounded by a faint blue reflection nebula, which is caused by the star's light reflecting off of nearby dust. This is the Hercules Globular Cluster, a dense ball of stars. It contains hundreds of thousands of stars packed tightly together, making it one of the densest known globular clusters in our galaxy. This is the Ring Nebula, a planetary nebula located in the constellation Lyra. It was formed when a dying star expelled its outer layers into space. The central star of the nebula, is a white dwarf. This is my attempt at the Eagle Nebula. The nebula is famous for the pillars of creation, those tall columns of gas and dust that are being eroded by the nearby stars. This is the Whirlpool Galaxy, a spiral galaxy that is interacting with a smaller companion galaxy, NGC 5195. This is the California Nebula, a large emission nebula located in the constellation Perseus. Supposedly it's shaped like the state of California. This is the Eastern Veil Nebula, a portion of the larger Veil Nebula, a supernova remnant located in the constellation Cygnus. The Eastern Veil Nebula has intricate filaments and structures that make it a stunning object to observe in the night sky. This is my poor attempt at the core of the Lagoon Nebula, located in the constellation Sagittarius. Way back there is the Sombrero Galaxy, a lenticular galaxy located about 28 million light years away from Earth. It's named for its distinctive shape, which resembles a sombrero hat. Cigar Galaxy is an irregular galaxy located about 12 million light years away from Earth. It has a cigar like shape and is undergoing a period of intense star formation. It is also a strong source of radio waves and x rays, suggesting the presence of a supermassive black hole in its center. Now for planets, or planetary images if you will. This was quite easy to get since the method here was to record raw videos of these planets and then stack the best frames out of it. Starting with the prettiest, no debate, here's Saturn, the second largest planet in our solar system and known for its rings. The rings are made up of millions of individualized particles, ranging in size from tiny grains to large boulders. 
now the big boy Jupiter, the largest planet in our solar system. It has colorful bands made by swirling storms, and the the big red spot, a massive storm on Jupiter's surface, that is twice the size of Earth and has been raging for at least 400 years. Jupiter also has dozens of moons, including the four largest moons called the Galilean moons. This is Mars, the fourth planet from the Sun and often called the Red Planet because of its reddish appearance in the sky. Mars is a rocky, desert-like planet with a thin atmosphere and a cold, dry surface. It might look like the Moon but it is actually Venus, the second planet from the Sun and often called the Morning Star or Evening Star because of its brightness in the sky. Hope you enjoyed seeing the results of my deep sky photography. It just goes to show that you don't need expensive equipment to capture amazing images of the night sky. If you're interested in getting started with astrophotography, I highly recommend giving it a try. Thanks for watching.